We'll get started. Uh, I'm actually going to start with some standing um, exercises to kind of warm us up a little bit faster than um, if we start on the mats. So you can take your feet to a comfortable stance, probably about shoulder distance apart, and you can do some gentle side bends. Inhale to windmill the arms, exhale. You really want to be rooted through your heels as you bend into the side. You're going to feel that stretch here. And you can go as slow as you like. And I do emphasize slow, especially if you've been sitting all day. Inhale. Exhale. And inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. And as you do more and more of these, you might be able to bend a little further each time. But don't force it. Listen to your body. You want to feel the stretch, but you don't want to pull a muscle. I forgot which side I started on, but we'll still do one more on each side. Okay, we're also not just getting motion in our spine for these lateral bends, we're also getting range of motion in our shoulders. Okay, your feet should already be in position about shoulder distance apart. You're gonna pretend like you're gonna sit in a chair. So this is your squat. So my toes and knees are pretty much facing forward, maybe slightly turned out. If this isn't a comfortable squat position for you, you can take your feet a little wider and turn the toes and knees out if needed. I like to engage my shoulders here, so reaching the arms forward, not shrugging the shoulders. And that kind of helps a little bit with balance. From the side view, it looks like this. You want to keep the abdominals braced, keep the chest lifted. The spine tilts forward, but the spine is still straight and lengthened. Your eye gaze is just over the fingertips, straight ahead. If you want to lower your arms, you can. Again, one of the reasons I'm keeping the arms up is just to get those shoulder muscles engaged. And I keep them up. So, but again, you can do whatever you like with the arms. Inhale, you can squat down. Exhale to stand up. I'm going to face front again. Um, you didn't have to turn sideways, by the way. Uh, I just want to show a profile view. You. you can always stay facing forward, uh, looking at the screen, whatever works for you. So we're actually going to go into a balance. So when we have our feet in a split stance, we feel balanced by equally distributing the weight into both feet. But when we go into a balance, we have to shift our entire weight over the only foot that is still on the ground. So pick, a, um, pick however long you want to stay balanced, as long as you know you're balanced, and then place the foot down because you want to place the foot down, not because you fell into uh, the squats. So again, you're going to do a squat, and then you go into the, uh, you're going to alternate sides. And again, you can go for as long as you like. If you want to engage the shoulder muscles again, and maybe it helps your arms with balance, you can have your arms forward, arms to the side. Arms forward, arms to the side. When I stand into my balanced leg, I'm not locking out my knees. So my knees are bent here, and there's a softness to my standing leg. I'm pretty much just lifting the knee to whatever height I want so that I can balance. If you want to lift it higher, you can. Um, but you also want to think about your spine. Your chest stays up, the abs stay braced. I'm drawing my abdominals in nice and tight. That also helps me balance. It's just kind of a little bit of standing warm up today. Still keeping Pilates principles in mind, which is that our core muscles are being worked. Any muscle that attaches to your spine and pelvis. So here we're working glutes, we've got hip flexors, hamstrings, inner outer thighs, and then we have our abdominals engaged. One more time to each side. And go at your own pace. Good. So finishing here, we're gonna take our feet nice and wide, as wide as it works for you. Toes and knees are turned into the corners of the room, shifting into that side lunge, feeling that stretch in the groin area, inner thighs being stretched. 
I bend my knees no further than the end of my toes. So if it feels better for your knees to pause right over the ankle, that's fine. But the, the farthest I would go is to sort of the end of my toes. If there is a wall right at the end of my toes, my knee can't go through that wall, basically. Okay, right now I'm keeping my spine vertical, straight, good posture. And then we're going to add a little bit of movement into the spine. So I'm gonna, this is my left leg, I know, but if you're mirroring me, it'll be your right. So you go into the side lunge, spine vertical, spine tilts, but try to feel as much length as you can. So it's the same diagonal as that straight leg and then come back to vertical and straight. Let's try the other side. Now, I was just using the arm to demonstrate that, you know, hopefully this is a straight line on the diagonal as possible, but you, you don't have to use your arms. You can um, keep them right by your side. Back to the first side, so you can hinge here. I'm right, literally trying to keep my chest forward and not rotating it downward. Up, okay, so vertical, tilt, back to vertical, and up. And you'll notice that as you tilt your spine over, your torso shifts, that more work is felt in the leg muscles. I'm gonna try one more version, and then you can decide which one you like to do and keep doing it. So I feel more work in the leg muscles, less work, and then pretty much no work when I straighten my legs. Okay, you can just keep off main breath. So decide which arm position you want. If you wanna start down here, you want to add a reach, return, all, all many options. All options are fine. Oh, sorry, so stay vertical and then lean back to vertical. And one more on each side. Okay, just make sure you're still breathing. Either breath pattern works. Well, I really want to just like, go right into that lean. <laughs> All right, good. You can take heel toe, your feet in. And then let's go ahead and walk it out. Make our way to the mat, stretching the hamstrings in the process. So there's an imaginary wall behind the head. I'm going to peel the head away from the shoulders. Abdominals, I mean lower back, <laughs> which is the opposite of the abdominals. And here my legs are still kind of straight, so I feel a nice stretch in the hamstring. My hamstrings are really tight today. I can't reach the floor, so I gotta bend my knees. And then from here, walking it out. I start to straighten my legs as much as I can as soon as I can. So there I'm feeling the hamstring stretch again. And then pause when the wrists are underneath the shoulders. Lower your butt until you're into that nice, straight, high plank. Straight line from ears to the ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankle joints. Let's take three breaths. Inhale. Exhale out through the mouth. Squeeze your abs. Squeeze your butt. Squeeze your quadriceps. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. Yeah, go ahead and bring your knees down. And come into a seated position. We're gonna talk a lot, a lot about eye gaze today. Where you look is really important in Pilates because it basically kind of determines your head, neck, spine alignment position. So right now we're sitting nice and tall. So my eye gaze is straight ahead of me. A beautiful cream colored wall in front of me. I'm gonna keep the arm forward. Exhale, we're gonna do a half roll back. Anchoring those toes, inhale, we'll lengthen. And I'm going to keep my eye gaze in the same position the whole time. Because the curvature in my spine is happening lower. So it's not really affecting the upper part of my spine, the thoracic vertebrae. So that means my eye gaze will pretty much stay 
straight ahead the entire time. I'm not gonna look up, I'm not gonna look down, right or left. I'm gonna give some arm variations. When the arms reach forward, I would say this is the, the basic half rollback. You feel your abdominals as you go about halfway back. If I change my arms, pull my fist to my chest and my elbows out, I feel more work in the abs. All right, if you've ever been on a rower, you grab the rowing machine handles, and you row back like this. This is not exactly rowing because usually by the time you row your arms all the way back, your legs are straight. So I am aware that this is not truly looking like rowing, but I just want kind of you to feel like a different way of pulling your elbows back today. Just pulling it out to the side. And then I'm gonna have you try this with your legs straight. Now the challenge to straightening the legs is the hamstring. My hamstrings are really tight. So when I sit with my legs straight, it's hard for me to straighten my spine, right? Because I'm tight in the hamstring. If I bend my knees, I can easily straighten my spine, or it's easier, I should say. But when i am got my legs straight, it's harder. So that's part of the challenge. So let's keep our arms forward for now. Anchor the heels, half roll back, and then as tall as you can with the spine. You're gonna feel those hamstrings if they're tight. Every time you sit up. And it's okay if you can't sit up all the way for the challenge. I definitely feel it, especially in my left hamstring. Try to keep those heels anchored to the ground. I know our legs are on the floor, but you want your quads engaged. So shall we try the row? Might be really hard. You pull back. You don't have to go all the way back if you don't want to. Just a little bit back and then reach it forward. I, I'm, I have a loose fist because I'm just sort of simulating if I had my hand on oars, but you don't actually have to close into a tight fist at all. You can just pull your elbows back and keep your hands open. Okay, let's do two more. Exhale here. Inhale, lengthen. Last one. Exhale and inhale. This looks a little bit more like the roll up, right? Because you usually roll up with the legs straight. So now that we're on the ground, the full roll up is reaching with the arms. And you know, our legs are already straight and engaged. So. And now here we actually want to round the spine to stretch not just our hamstrings, but also the muscles on our back, the spine muscles. Roll on down. So let's talk about the eye gaze here. When you're on the mat, you're looking at the ceiling. You bring the arms up, the hands come into peripheral view, right? So now I'm looking at my fingers, and my eyes are actually gonna follow my fingers at this point. Just down the ceiling, down the wall, to my toes. And now here, I'm actually looking right at my knees. Because if I were looking at my toes, my head and neck, my neck, sorry, would be hyperextended. So it's really all about the position of the thoracic spine. So I start to roll down, I'm staring ahead. As I start to roll down even more, I'm basically kind of I gaze those up the wall, across the ceiling, to just above your eyes. All right, let's do two more at your own pace. Kind of pay attention to your head and neck position, and basically your eye gaze. Then nice and slow. Let's do one more. I did a lot of half rollbacks, so I'm not going to do too many of these full roll ups today. All right, so we're going to go right into the single leg stretch. I did kind of a standing warm today, so I didn't do all the toe taps. Uh, but we might do some variation of it later. 
So for our single leg stretch, I'm reaching out, out on the diagonal. If you want the head, neck, and shoulder blades lifted, the IVs will be on the knees. You definitely don't want the IVs up to the ceiling because that puts extra strain on the neck. Again, if your shoulder blades are up, your thoracic spine is curved. We're trying to keep that curvature. I want you to pause with the front knee bent. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. We're going to switch sides. But I have my front knee bent. I'm going to take my hands behind my head. And we're going to rotate towards the front knee. Then come to center. I'm going to try to hold my legs as still as possible in front of that lower back. Lower the head, neck, and shoulders. Come right back up, same side. Rotate. Center. And down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, rotate. So just keep alternating the breath. If you actually prefer to inhale, lift, and exhale, rotate, that's okay too. So four on each side. I think this is the fourth. Good. Switch legs. Lift. Rotate to the back knee. Center and down. Make sure both shoulder blades come off the ground. Shoulder blades off. They stay off as you rotate. Elbows stay wide. Two more. I know this is very intense. And last one. All right, we're going to go into regular, or I should say basic uh, bicycle, the bicycle you're more accustomed to. So go ahead and lift up, exhale to rotate, inhale to midline, exhale, rotate to the other side. This one almost feels a little easier after the other variation you just did. Breathing. Inhale, cross the midline, exhale, rotate. Two more. I mean, two more to each side, so one more to each side. Okay. Good. We're going to go to double leg stretch. So if my head's on the ground, my eye gaze is to the ceiling. If you're foot cramped, instead of pointing the toes, you can flex the feet and reach the heels out there. If you want your head, neck, and shoulders off the mat, again, you're going to be looking at your knees. You can look at your knees as they come in, look at your knees as they go away. Inhale to come in, exhale to extend. Arm and legs can go to any diagonal that is challenging for you. Last one here. Okay, so like I said, we missed the or I sort of skip the toe taps in the beginning. The toe taps are actually the same, we're very similar to scissors, but the knees are bent at 90. So we're actually gonna go back right now, imprint the lower back, tap it out, tap it out. So if you notice, we have both legs at tabletop and we lower one and lift one. When we do scissors, it's a switch, switch, switch. So what we're gonna do, with this bent knee, 90 degree toe tapping, is do a constant switch like the scissors. I'm gonna lower one, and now I'm gonna switch, switch. For now, keep the legs at 90 degrees. Again, very similar to how we do scissors. It's a constant switch. As one goes down, the other goes up. And for the spine. If you'd like to lift the head, neck, and shoulder blades, here we go. And then I'm going to slowly start to straighten my legs. Switch. There's a little greater than 90. Greater than 90. Greater than 90. Greater than 90. Getting to straight. And now we are in scissors, like you've seen it before. Exhale. Inhale to switch. Exhale. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pause. I know your abs are really tired. I'm just gonna do a double leg lowering. Again, from the warm up that I normally do, uh, the double leg tap. Exhale, lower. Exhale, lower. Exhale, lower. Exhale, lower. 
Inhale to lift. Knees are back in 90 degrees. You don't have to go all the way down. Again, if you look at the hip action, right, the hip angle is increasing and then coming back to 90. And that's what double leg lowering is. So this is the last exercise we're doing. Not this one, but the one right after this. Feel free if your leg, uh, if your abs are really fatigued to, to keep the knees at 90 degrees. Also, because if it's a challenge to you here, that's all you need. If it's challenging for you, that's, that's great. That's all you want. Um, the other variation is straighten the legs. And again, look at the hip angle. It increases, it comes back to 90. So whatever is happening below the knee joint, whether it's straight or bent, doesn't change what's happening at the hip. Now this is more challenging because why? Longer lever, longer legs. Exhale, lower, reinforcing in front, inhale, lift. Last one, last one. Okay, I am done. Oof. I am done with my abs. All right. So similar exercises we do on uh, Pilates week after week, just changing up the order a little bit. So let's get into our spine. So first spine extension of the day. So let's just make sure we have some support here. Eye gaze, super important. You hear me talk about this all the time. We're not gonna look up at the wall in front of us because that would be a hyperextended neck. So your eye gaze is gonna be on the floor, on the mat, pretty much just underneath your uh, forehead. That's kind of where you're looking, wherever your forehead is, that's where you're looking. A little pressure into the forearms. Let's engage those legs, even though they're on the mat, they're apart, they're engaged though. Now, oftentimes I see people do a really great neutral neck, neutral head position when the forearms are down. And then the moment we take the arms back, I see this where they try to reach with their arms and for some reason their head goes up. So be really aware that when you reach the arms to the back, you might feel a little more lift in the chest, maybe a little more lift, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need to look up. You might look a little further out down the mat towards the edge of your mat, right from here to here, but your eye should still pretty much be on the mats and not on the wall in front of you. It's something I used to see a lot when I was teaching Pilates in the studios, where as people reach their arms back, they start to lift their head. Even though they weren't lifting their head when their forearms were on the ground. Last one. Good, go ahead and push yourself up and give yourself a little spine stretch here. My abs are still pretty tired from we just did, so let's do a shoulder bridges. All right, so we actually warmed up standing today doing squats. Squats work the same muscles as the skip bridge, shoulder bridge, it works our glutes. We flex at the hip, we extend at the hip. All right. Do a few that where you roll up articulate. So with your table on the floor, roll up inch by inch. One verb at a time. And then roll down inch by inch, lower one vertebra at a time. Okay, just do that one more time. Just to feel sort of like your spine is like links of a chain. When you pick a chain off the ground, you pick it up link by link. And now, Let's not do that. So it's obviously not possible for a chain to lift up the whole thing. But now pretend your spine is able to go from chain link fence to like a ruler, right? A straight wooden yardstick. Lift the whole spine up from tailbone to shoulder blades, up and down. And that's the that's the beauty of the spine is it can be mobile, can move vertebra by vertebra, or it can be very strong and stable and moved as one straight unit. Don't be 
be confused with the word strong and stable versus stiff. If you aren't able to move your spine because you're stiff, that's a different story. All right, we're gonna make little circles. So before we lift our hip, just a quick practice. You can keep the knee bent. It's all about circling at the hip joint. So your thigh bone is circling. So you can draw a circle with your knee or you can do a straight leg. Same motion at the hip, just longer leap. All right, now that we know what we're doing, we're gonna lift the hip and move. Up. We'll do both sides twice. So this first side I'm gonna do with my knees bent. Three times in each direction. Really slow, not too big. Okay. Reverse. I know sometimes it's a little confusing to do circles with knees bent. But really, you just want to imagine there's an ink smudge on your knee, and the ceiling is right here, and you're drawn with your knee on the ceiling. It's probably the easiest way to think about it. Now, all this work on the back leg, the back leg that's on the ground, the glute has to do the work to keep both right and left hips the same height. So let's lift the other side. Circle for a three. Don't make the circle too big because you don't want to like topple over. Uh, but don't make the circle so small you don't feel any challenge to your abs. Good, reverse it for three. We're only doing six, and I shouldn't say only because if you move slowly and really focus on the glutes and the abs, this is a lot of work to do six. Six high quality ones. It's always quality over quantity. All right, leg down, go down. Round two, I'm gonna demonstrate my leg straight, but feel free to keep your knees bent. Circle for three. Two. And one. Reverse for three. Now my hamstrings are pretty tight too, so my circles are probably a little smaller than my legs are straight. One. Really fire up those quads if your legs are straight. All right, last time on the leg. Circle for three. Two. One. Reverse for three. Keep alternating the breath. Two. One. I'm actually breathing a lot, but I'm also talking, which you know affects my breathing. All right, we're not going far, just coming to the side here. Today, we're going to focus on internal, external rotations. If you lie on a straight edge, align yourself to the straight edge of the mat that you kicked in hand. We're going to have our feet flex the entire time today. Neutral is no rotation. Kneecaps and toes face forward. If you look at my feet, they're parallel to each other. When my top leg rests onto my bottom leg, I feel the heel, the back of my foot, and the front of my foot hit the other foot at the same time. You probably want to go to about parallel. You'll notice if you go too much further, higher, your foot naturally wants to externally rotate. We're going to do external rotation next. So you can go to about parallel or a little bit higher than parallel, as long as you can maintain that neutral position. The moment you feel your legs start actually rotating, that's when you want to stop. Now, I'm not looking at my leg because if I did, my head and neck would not be aligned with my spine. And you really want to kind of get a good feeling of what it feels like to be in neutral. And then maybe every once in a while you can go a little higher and then see if you can feel when the moment your leg goes from neutral to external, externally rotated. So quads engage, legs nice and straight, abs tight for support, stability in your hands. So let's move into external. So what's gonna happen is normally if I just say, go oh, keep going higher and higher, higher, you're gonna externally rotate anyways, right? And then as you come down, you'll notice if you stay externally rotated, only the back of your foot or your heels will touch. 
and the front of your foot will not. They will not touch each other. So we're actually going to stay externally rotated the entire time. And this exercise targets your hip flexors and quadriceps. So when your leg is externally rotated, the muscles used are different from when your leg is in neutral. You might also feel a nice little stretch. You can lift your legs so high that you get a stretch here. Whereas when your legs are neutral, we actually stop the lift to prevent the rotation. So you don't, you don't ever reach your max to the stretching. You can exhale, lift, inhale, lower, whichever you prefer. You can inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Either works. This bottom leg is engaged. Maybe it doesn't look it, maybe it looks relaxed, but I am doing my best to keep my quads tight, contracted, so the leg is stable. All right, I'm doing my best to count. I think we've done around eight-ish. So then internal rotation. Toes together, heel apart. And this, I think, is the most challenging one because our legs automatically want to come back to neutral. So as we start to lift, if I lift too high, my leg will automatically start to turn back to neutral. So be very careful about how high you lift. You should feel a little more glute minimus and glute medius. So not exactly your outer thigh, but more sort of like a specific area of your butt, like this outer part of your butt. That's where you're gonna feel it. And if you do a quick spot check, your toes, there should be a slant of your foot. Your toes should be lower than your heel. And if I lift too high and I check right there, my uh, toes are the same height as my heel. So I, I switched over to neutral. So I kind of know where my limit is, like how high I can lift before my leg wants to open up. So doing my best here to keep the toes down below the heels. And every time my top foot comes to the bottom, only the front part of the foot should be hitting and touching. And just for a quick demonstration, just go back to neutral for a moment. And it should just, it should just feel easier. It should feel different. And you go back to external. Definitely feels different. All right, so that's kind of, we're going to switch sides. So that's kind of how you can tell. Like you should hopefully be able to feel different muscles fatiguing based on the leg position, whether it's internal or externally rotated. All right, same thing. Brother abs in. Starting in neutral, both legs, both quads engaged. So again, neutral, you can lift a little higher than the hip, not too much higher. Internal rotation, your cap pretty low, maybe right here. Neutral, a little higher. External, the highest. Or I should say the greatest range of motion. Internal rotation has the least radial motion. I think I say the word so too much. I'm going to stop saying it. Watch me say it really soon. You want to be out of five? Let's go to. External rotation. You can either externally rotate it here to start, or you can just start in neutral and then it's higher and higher and higher. And your foot will naturally externally rotate. It, it has to. It's just the way the body is designed. Now, it's not to say there aren't exceptions. So I have seen uh, people in my class uh, be internally rotated and also have their leg lifted really high. And it always kind of scared me. 
like they're double jointed or something. So yes, there are exceptions, but in, in general. The greatest range of motion allowed in your hip is in external rotation. Well, I'm gonna draw the leg nice and straight, both legs straight, contracted, engaging the quads. We didn't do hundreds today. How do you feel about that? Maybe we should do it near the end of class to see what it feels like to do hundreds at the end of class instead of the beginning of class. Why not? Try new things. Let's try anything to do 200. Just kidding. Let's do internal rotation. No, we're not going to do 200. We're all asymmetrical humans. So you might be able to internally rotate more on one leg than the other. You might be able to externally rotate on one leg compared to the other. It might be really hard for you to internally rotate on one leg compared to the other. As in, this is like so much effort for me to do on the left side, but it was easy for me to internally rotate on the right. So just because you're able to do something, um, the effort level might not be the same. These are all things to note. You can already tell, like, as I'm lifting, I don't think I can lift this side before my leg just wants to go into neutral. And on the right side, I could lift a little higher and stay in internal rotation before my leg wanted to go to neutral. Just increasing body awareness, learning about your body. A couple more internally rotated. And then just do a couple more neutral. Just kind of feel that muscle release. Neutral is easier than internal. And then I think external is the easiest. Okay, let's just do a quick stretch of the muscle we just hit. So ankle over the opposite knee. Pull it in, stretch here. Breathe about 15 seconds. I really don't take enough time to stretch, um, which is why I like Pilates because Pilates is a stretch and strength in one, right? As we're doing scissors and things like that, um, as one muscle group is contracting the other, the opposite muscle, like when the quads contract, the hamstring stretch. So I just feel like I'm doing a stretch and strength all in one class so I don't have to separately stretch. <laughs> I mean, I probably should, but I just don't. All right, well, here's the hundreds that I promised you. So bring the legs to the top. Extend one leg out, then the other. Pull it in. But pick whichever leg you want to leave. You can change lead legs. You now pick a front leg to go straight, straight, and then front leg bend, bend. Back leg, straight, straight, back leg leads, bend, bend. It's finding the angles. So again, 90 degrees, maybe about 45. When the legs are straight, back to 90. They imprint it. Let's try a couple with the head, neck, and shoulders up. Straighten, straighten, bend, bend, straighten, straighten, bend, bend. Now let's go into hundreds. Let's keep your knees here bent. And you go straight, straight, and up. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, ten. Inhale, exhale. You can change your leg position at any time during these hundreds. Exhale. 30. Inhale. Exhale. Four. You can change it back to bed. Exhale. 50. Go back to straight. You don't have to do it one at a time. I don't know why I did that. Inhale. Exhale. 
70, inhale. Exhale. 80, inhale. Exhale. 90, inhale. And exhale. All right. Well, that felt challenging. Um, you know, doing it 40 minutes into class instead of 10 minutes into class. So back to our um, spine. You stack your hands and put your forehead on, on it, on your hands, and you lift your arms and chest. Wherever you're looking, that's the exact perfect place where you want to be looking. Keep those legs engaged, but on the ground, inhale, lift the arms and chest, exhale, lower. You, you can't close your eyes, I know, um, anytime you're doing Pilates, but I would just for a moment, look at what you're looking at. And then see, if you can keep that exact same position and height as you move the arm back. So inhale to lift, hold it still, exhale, swing those arms back. Maybe you'll lift your chest a little bit more, just a smidgen, bring it, circle those arms back to the forehead and then lower. So not only are we working on endurance of the spine, oops, I said so again. Not only are we working on endurance of the spine, but we're really trying to keep that head and neck position perfectly still. Resist the urge to want to look up because the hands have left the forehead. Get some range of motion in the shoulder joints. Do two more. My left shoulder is kind of creaking and making noise. Last one. I know we haven't listed our legs yet. Um, you don't necessarily have to in order to give your spine an effective workout. All right, we're gonna um, come into a low plank, a plank on our elbows. And then we're gonna stay in that plank and from there climb up, not climbing, but move up into our wrists, okay? So that's part of the challenge is maintaining that straight plank position while moving from your elbows to your wrists. So elbows underneath the shoulders, find that straight line, ears, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles. Do two breaths here. I use on your thumbs, inhale, exhale. Everything around your pelvis is tight, abs, glutes, quads. Inhale, exhale. If your feet aren't hip distance apart, make sure they are. I'll just take my feet a little wider. And you're gonna put one hand exactly where the elbow was, and then the other. Now you're up, arms vertical, eye gaze between your thumbs on the floor. Two more breaths, inhale, exhale, last breath, inhale, and exhale. Okay, good. Check out your wrist for a moment. We're gonna do some leg circling again. Again. Wrist underneath the shoulders, you know, the hips. The leg circling is happening behind us. If you make your leg circle very wild and large and fast and sloppy, there's a lot of movement going on in my spine. We're trying to avoid that. Engage the abs, try to keep the spine in neutral. You're also gonna really rely on your arms. So arm strength, so there's no shifting on the body. Now we have one leg lifted. Raise the abs, make eye gaze on the floor between the thumbs. And make the circle pretty small and slow. Moving within the range of motion of the hip socket so that your pelvis isn't disturbed. There's a certain amount of range that you can do. Do five in each direction. Certain amount of range before your pelvis shifts. And once your pelvis shifts, your spine shifts. Reverse direction if you haven't yet. Five, four, Leg very straight, three, 
Squeeze the butt. Two. One. Good. Oh, my arms are getting really tired. Uh, we'll just do it on the other way. That's it. Not going to do a second set. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. I know you can't see your leg. Hopefully you can feel your spine. Hopefully you can feel that your leg is circling and your spine is still despite your circling leg. Good. Shake out your wrist for a moment, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to circle the arms. Not like that. We're going to do it back on our um, hands and knees. And what happens is when you lift your arm, so it's parallel, we're targeting the rear deltoids, the muscle right around your scapula, your shoulder blades. We slash a lot because these muscles aren't very active to keep our shoulder blades together. That's exactly what we're targeting, rear deltoids, like this. Make those same circles, arms nice and straight. You're gonna feel it as you lift the arm, lower the arm, lift the arm a little bit above the plane of the body, lower it below the plane of the body. Again, if you make your arms too, circle too big, it's not gonna feel great. Um, it might start to affect your spine. Reverse directions for five. Four, three, two, one. All right, so just a, a couple things is if you lower your arm down a lot, it, it doesn't really matter if you lower it too much because you know it's gonna be relaxing no matter what. But when you, um, what happens is sometimes as you come up, you might bend your arm because you're trying to make a greater range of motion but it's really hard to keep your arm straight. So it's okay if your arm bend a little bit, but try your best to keep your arm as straight as possible. So let's try the other arm. Five circles, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I remember what I was gonna to say too, is that the more ahead of your head, it, sometimes that's what makes you want to bend your arms. So if you need to go a little wider to keep your arm straight, you can you can do that. Reverse direction for five, four, three, two, one. Basically, this is hard to keep straight sometimes. This is where we bend, but this is easier to keep straight. So you might circle just a little bit more away from the midline, and that's okay. All right. So we're getting close to the end of class here. Um, Always do teasers in class, so we're just gonna finish with a few teasers and do a quick stretch. We're looking for a smooth flow here. Eye gaze on the ceiling, grab those fingertips, look at the fingertips, look at the knees, and we're up in our teaser. And here, exhale, extend the legs, lower your spine. I'm still looking at my knees. As my spine goes down, I start looking at my fingertips. And then once my hands go over my head, I just stay looking at the ceiling. Ceiling, to the knees, to the knees. Knees, roll down to the ceiling. Do two more, make sure you're breathing. Inhale, arms, head, shoulder blades, exhale, legs, abs. Your legs extend just before your spine rolls up. Your legs extend just before your spine rolls down. It's all about the counterbalance. Your legs provide the counterbalance so your spine can do what it needs to do. Or I should say, your abs can do what it needs to do, which is work. Okay. All right, all I know are fun. We did four great teasers. All right. Uh, you, can, you can come to your knees. Or you can sit cross-legged, whatever works for a straight spine. And instead of doing a side bend, which is what I started class with, I would need another side bend if you want. Uh, but I'm gonna actually have you do a rotational stretch. Whenever you do a side bend or a rotation, there's one part, one half of your body that's contracting or shortening, and the other half is stretching. Take it to the other side. So the side we're turning toward is contracting, 
one side that's farther is stretching. So similar with this, as I go towards, here's the shortening contracting, and this is the stretching lengthening. Good. Feel free to continue stretching and doing whatever else you need to do post class. Um, but we will conclude our class there today. Thanks for uh, joining and let me know what your feedback is about doing things out of order.